All right, welcome to Paint Talk, everyone, the weekly show where I show you a time lapse video of one of my paintings that you can actually find on my uh, Patreon page, is linked below. And I just kind of give my opinion on a topic dealing with painting. Today, I'm going to go over the five things that I wish I knew when I was a beginner oil painter. Before we jump in, please, if you like the video, if you like the channel, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, now these are going to be in no particular order. So I'm going to jump on in with number one, which is I wish I knew how important drawing is. I've talked about this a lot and I feel like a lot of people kind of go through the same thing is a lot of people start out drawing, you know, everybody draws when they're younger. And so you, you, you start out drawing and then, you know, maybe like this is what happened with me. I, I moved to uh, watercolors and then acrylics and then eventually oils. And I kind of got in my head this progression and it was just like, oh, like I graduated from drawing and now I'm moving on to watercolors and then acrylics and then oils. And for a while, I thought spending any time drawing would be, you know, a step back, which was further from the truth. And at a certain point, I, I hit a wall with my work. And it wasn't until I actually practiced my drawing and got better at drawing that I was able to get past that. And now when I talk about drawing, like I'm not necessarily saying like, you know, pencil, charcoal, drawing, shading and all that stuff. I'm mainly talking just the ability to take what you see and accurately put it onto a canvas. I get people asking me all the time, like, should I not start oil painting and go learn how to draw first and then come to oil paint? I say no, you know, because you're going to learn how to draw while you oil paint, like you're gonna have to draw on your subject. And you know, even if you're drawing it in with paint, and you're not doing it detailed, you, like, you still have to get things in accurately. If I'm painting a landscape, like I have to rent, I have to block in those trees in the right size and the right shape, I have to create perspective. You know, if I'm doing a face, like I have to get where I have to place the features. And even if it is placing the features over the course of a painting and constantly moving and adjusting, you know, where features and things are, it's still drawing. It's still that hand eye coordination, be able to look at something, judge distances, judge shapes and judge angles. Honestly, when I look at a lot of my students work, you know, 90% of the time, their main issue is drawing. Like if they could get better at drawing, they would see a drastic uh, improvement in their work. And now the thing about drawing is there's no shortcuts with it. There's no tips. Like I can tell you certain things that will help you, you know, see values correctly. I could tell you, you know, mix this color and that color will kind of get you, you know, around this color and, and ideas to think about, you know, with color, how color works, you know, some rules with composition. Like there's things that I can tell you that you can get pretty quickly and go implement on a painting right away and see an improvement. But drawing, it's just straight practice. It's just putting in the time and practicing drawing. Like there's not much anyone can really tell you. Like they can tell you certain things to practice or certain things to get good at. It's just something that just takes a lot of time and practice. Which is why I always recommend not to trace when you don't have to. Uh, I, I get a lot of people say, oh, like tracing isn't bad, you know, like, like no, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't times when you're going to need to trace or, or make a grid or something like that to get an image onto a canvas. But there's no arguing that every time you trace, you miss an opportunity to get better at drawing. Like if you drew that instead of traced it, that is more time logged in the drawing column opposed to the tracing column. And you can always get better at drawing. I really see drawing as like a muscle and if you don't work it out, it's gonna get weak. And it's way too easy to slip into the bad habit of thinking, oh, you know, I got the drawing thing down, like I figured it out, you know, I can trace, I can draw, whatever, like I'm just gonna trace this because I, I need to do it quickly. You know, falling into that, I've been there, and I've done it and I've done it for too long. And when I came back to drawing, my drawing skills were not what they were. Now, if you're going down a path of art or painting that you know you'll never need to not trace, that's fine, I guess. But if you ever wanna paint anything from life, portrait, landscape, still life, you're gonna need to draw. There's just no way around it. So always be practicing your drawing and don't let that muscle get weak. Number two thing I wish that I knew is I wish I would have just found one method or like one instructor and just stuck with them for at least two or three years. Now, even back when I was first trying to figure this stuff out in college and right out of college, 
I really wanted to learn how to play an air paint and I, I didn't know anybody around me. I didn't have money to go take workshops or private lessons. So I have to find people online. And, and the thing is, I would find this person and I, I'd want, you know, I'd, I'd follow their tutorial and then this person, a different one. And they all painted differently. They all use different materials. And when you're just starting out and trying to get a base and just trying to get your legs under you, you really want to just stick with one. Like they all are great and they all can work, but bouncing from one to the other, you're just going to spin your wheels because you're not going to have any consistency. In order to progress, like you need to have a consistent way of working so you can take steps forward. And once you feel comfortable with oil paints, then you can branch off and, and start learning under this person, that person. It is valuable to study under different people and see different ways of going about it. That's kind of how you will develop your own way of doing it. But in terms of just getting started, I feel like you're gonna have way more success and progress a lot faster by choosing one person and method and sticking with it. Think of it this way. Think about when you were a little kid and you were first learning to tie your shoes. There's a lot of different ways to do the tie the shoe thing. And imagine you being a little kid and having three or four different people telling you three or four different ways how to tie your shoes. They all work. They all end with you being able to tie a shoe, but you going from one to the other it's going to be hard to get a process down because they're all different and they're constantly changing. All right, number three is I wish I would have paid more attention to the fundamentals. Uh, now, like the fundamentals, when I say that, I mean things like value, color, you know, seeing the big shapes, simplifying a seam. See, for most of my life with drawing and painting, like I was kind of self-taught and when you're self-taught you rely a lot on instinct for things. So when I actually came across the opportunity to learn fundamentals, that stuff it felt dry and academic and boring and I don't want to do it. I'm like, ah, oh, no, like I'm, I'm self-taught. I can just, I'll just do it and figure it out by painting. You can't do that. You can learn by just painting a lot. It wasn't until I really understood what makes a painting work, which are the fundamentals. And, and I actually stopped and was like, all right, I'm going to kind of focus on these and get these down. Like it wasn't until I did that, that I actually was able to really level up my, my painting ability. And the thing is, is I was totally wrong. These fundamentals aren't dry and boring and academic. They're what make a painting work, which is why I made my foundations of oil painting course, like based off of these fundamentals. I wanted to present these fundamentals in a fun, easy to digest way, because I know these fundamentals are at the core of every good, you know, method of, of teaching or instruction out there. It's just that a lot of them out there, they kind of bury these fundamentals under technique, style and materials, and they can kind of get lost. So I wanted to make a course that had them in the forefront and, and, and really address them head on. But if I would have been so stubborn at the beginning and actually looked into these fundamentals and understood them and got, you know, a grip on them, I would have seen progression in my work a lot faster. It took me like 10 years to figure it out on my own and it didn't need to take that long. All right, the next thing I wish I knew when I was a beginner was what materials to get. I really spent a lot of time fumbling through materials, thinking that the answer to my painting problems were better materials. Let me tell you, if you're starting out painting, very, very rarely is the answer to your painting problems gonna be getting better materials. They can help a little bit, but they're never really the solution. And I would fall in that trap thinking like, oh, like I need to get this material or that material. Then I, then, then I think it'd, it'd be working. If you're starting out with oil paints and you can't get the results you want with a basic, you know, Frederick's canvas pad and some, you know, basic Windsor and Newton oil paint and some linseed oil and paint thinner, the problem isn't your materials. Also, I really don't recommend making your materials. Uh, unless you're really set up for it, if you got like a wood shop and, and that stuff kind of comes easy to you. But, you know, I, I spent a lot of time like making my own art panels and, and going through that. And again, this was during the time when I would see, you know, one instructor and they painted on just gessoed wood panels. And this person painted on, you know, oil primed linen and this person painted on canvas and this and that. And, and at one point I thought like, oh, I need to make my own materials because I don't have much money and it's cheaper this way. And it is cheaper you know, you go to Home Depot and you get a piece of wood, you get them to cut it into, you know, nine by 12 panels or whatever, and then you just, so it, it is cheaper, but your time is also worth something. And I just, I rather spend the extra couple bucks per panel to just have it there, have it ready. Um, it also is easier to paint. Like if you're like 
and want to sit down and paint like oh man i'm out of panels like i have to go and buy and cut and make a bunch of panels which can take days to do uh it, it, that's going to get in the way of your progress so just keeping it simple with materials you know knowing you only need the primaries in white ultramarine blue lizard crimson cadmium lemon titanium white yeah you can have other colors uh and that they can help but you don't need to have them so looking back i kind of wasted a lot of time uh messing around with with materials and i wish someone could have just told me you know use this use this use this and move on and the last thing that i wish i did a lot sooner was start this youtube channel uh, i've been so surprised at how much i enjoy teaching and helping people and just figuring out better and better ways to communicate what i know and share what i know i also feel that i'm in a, a unique position here because i learned to paint uh the way you're painting right now you know through online videos and and just online content like i never had an actual like instructor you know after college you know even in college my painting instructors weren't uh really that helpful and having to learn on your own at home is just a different experience and i feel like a lot of really good painters you know learned traditional way through an art school they had a mentor and instructor that they studied with for a long period of time but i feel like you have to go about it a little bit differently when you're teaching uh through a video like this to people that don't have a physical instructor with them also having this channel has made me a lot better of a painter whenever i tell other painters like hey you should start a youtube channel you should teach they's like oh like i can't teach i'm self-taught and like i don't even know exactly how i do things and taking the time to break down your own process to explain it to somebody will make you understand your process a lot more and and let you see where you need to get better and what you probably need to change about your process there's that saying that says if you really want to get good at something teach it and i have found that to be very true i really feel that anybody that paints should start a youtube channel at some point in time and if you don't plan on teaching you know just sharing your work is just another great way to share your work there's people that have youtube channels for painting and they just sell prints like there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it if you're not a tech person like i am not a tech person at all like i have no editing or tech experience like i had to learn all of this as i did it and i feel like that's even more of a reason for you to start a youtube channel if you're a painter because you're gonna have like it's just the way things are going really you know like everything is going online i mean look at this past year like look how many businesses had to move to online it's just going to keep going in that direction so the sooner that you understand this medium and understand this way of sharing it, it what it is that you do the better off you're going to be and that's all that you know having a youtube channel is like it doesn't need to affect your work or change your work like don't be afraid like if you start a youtube channel it's going to change like what you paint or how you paint it's just another way and probably the best way to just share what it is that you do all right so those are the things that i wish i knew when i was a beginner oil painter i uh, hope you found this video helpful if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're looking for full painting video tutorials i have those on my patreon page which is listed below also down there is a link to my foundations of oil painting course and if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.